So if you guys are new to my channel, I made a video in February talking about the best graphics cards that people can buy for the money. And that video is one of my most viewed videos on this channel to date. But with that being said, most of the graphics card men mentioned in that video were Nvidia. And that's because at the time, AMD didn't have any high-end competitor cards for this generation to choose from. But with the recent release of the RX Vega 56, 64, and the RX Vega Liquid Cooled Edition, I thought it was time for a refresh on that video. Hey guys, this is Nick, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the best graphics card you can buy for the money in 2017. So, as I did with my first video, we're going to be splitting this video up into three categories, and that is the budget section, aka graphics cards that maintain a price in between 0 to 150, the mid-end section, which will contain graphics cards that have a price tag in between 150 and 300, and the high-end section, which will contain graphics cards that cost 300 and above. And at the end of the each section, I'm going to make a recommendation as to which card I think you should pick up. So starting off with the budget end section, for the budget and graphics cards, we have the GT, GT 1030 for $70, the RX 560 2GB model for $100, the GTX 1050 for $110, and the GTX 1050 Ti for $150. So starting off our list, we have the GT 1030, which is a new addition to the list and is also the cheapest card on the list, costing only $70. Looking at benchmarks for the GT 1030 in Mass Effect Andromeda, it scored an average of 37 frames per second at 1080p medium settings. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, this card received an average of 36 frames per second at 1080p high settings. And in Witcher 3, it scored an average of 33 frame per frames per second at 1080p medium settings. Next up on our list, we actually have the RX 560 2GB model, which is actually a card that has seen a price drop down to $100 instead of $120. Jumping right into benchmarks, in Mass Effect Andromeda, this card received an average of 45 frames per second at 1080p medium settings. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, this card received an average of 44 frames per second at 1080p high settings, and in Witcher 3, this card received an average of 42 frames per second at 1080p medium settings. Up next, we have the GTX 1050 coming in at $110. So getting into benchmarks, in Mass Effect Andromeda, this card managed an, managed an average of 49 frames per second at 1080p medium settings. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, this card received an average of 53 frames per second at 1080p high settings, and in Witcher 3, this card received an average of 42 frames per second at medium settings. Last but not least, we have the GTX 1050 Ti, which is actually the most expensive card in this portion of the video, coming in at $150. Going into benchmarks in Mass Effect Andromeda, this card received an average of 54 frames per second at 1080p medium settings. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, this card received an average of 60 frames per second at 1080p high settings, and in Witcher 3, this card received an average of 55 frames per second at medium settings. So, as you know, I recommend one graphics card from each section, and for the lower end section, my recommendation lies with the GTX 1050. Now, the 1050 is a more expensive card in this segment of the video, but honestly, if you have the money to spend on it, you definitely should go with the 1050, because it really delivers solid performance in most AAA games at 1080p, 60, or 50fps at medium or high settings. As for the GT 1030, it's a cheap card, but it really is only meant for games like esports titles or if you're playing games at 720p or 900p. And while the RX 560 is a little cheaper, it doesn't deliver the same performance in games, and the 1050 is only $10 more. Now if you do have the money, I would strongly recommend getting a 1050 Ti, but it is about a $40 or $50 price jump and some of you may not have that money. So up next for the mid-end section of the video, we have the RX 570 for $180, the GTX 1060 3GB model for $200, the RX 580 for $250, and the GTX 1060 6GB model for $250. So starting off with the RX 570 in Mass Effect Andromeda at ultra settings 1080p, this graphics card managed 44 frames per second. In Witcher 3, this graphics card managed 44 frames per second at ultra settings 1080p. And in Rise of the Tomb Raider at ultra graphics settings, this card received a stable 49 frames per second. Next up, we have the GTX 1063GB model for $200. 
for this benchmark in Mass Effect Andromeda, this game managed 47 frames per second at Ultra Settings 1080p. In Witcher 3, this graphics card got 49 frames per second at Ultra Settings in 1080p, and in Rise of the Tomb Raider at Ultra Graphics Settings in 1080p, this card managed 57 frames per second. Next, we have the RX 580 8GB model, which costs around $250. Jumping into benchmarks, in Mass Effect Andromeda, this card managed 57 frames per second at Ultra Settings 1080p. In Witcher 3, this graphics card managed 61 frames per second at Ultra Settings 1080p. And in Rise of the Tomb Raider, this graphics card managed 69 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. Last for this segment out of the video, but definitely not least, we have the GTX 1060 6GB model for again around $250. Looking at the benchmarks, in Mass Effect Andromeda, this graphics card managed 55 frames per second at Ultra Settings 1080p. In Witcher 3, this graphics card managed 59 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. And in Rise of the Tomb Raider, this graphics card managed 71 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. So, my recommendation for the mid-end section of the video is going to have to lie with the RX 570. Even though it is the lowest end graphics card on the list, it seriously packs a punch and honestly is still one of the best price to performance graphics cards on the market right now, ever since the release of the RX 470 a year ago. I'm still extremely impressed with AMD on this card. And last, for the high end section of the video, we have the GTX 1070, the GTX 1080, and the newly released RX Vega 56 and 64. I did consider putting the RX Vega 64 Liquid Cooled Edition and the GTX 1080 Ti in this section of the video, but given that both come in at over $600, I thought it would be sort of unreasonable to include those two. So starting off with the GTX 1070 for around $350, jumping right into benchmarks, in Mass Effect Andromeda, this graphics card managed 92 frames per second at ultra settings in 1080p. In Witcher 3, this graphics card managed 75 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. And in Rise of the Tomb Raider, this graphics card managed 137 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. Up next, for the RX Vega 56, starting at about $400, starting with benchmarks, in Mass Effect Andromeda, this graphics card received 87 frames per second at Ultra Settings in 1080p. In Witcher 3, this card managed 73 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. And in Rise of the Tomb Raider, this card managed 119 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. Next up, we have the GTX 1080 coming in at about $500. In Mass Effect Andromeda, this card managed 107 frames per second at Ultra Settings in 1080p. In Witcher 3, this graphics card managed 101 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings, and in Rise of the Tomb Raider at Ultra Settings, this graphics card managed 161 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. And finally, for the last card in the video, we have the RX Vega 64 coming in at $500. In Mass Effect Andromeda, this card managed 102 frames per second at Ultra Settings in 1080p. In Witcher 3, this card managed 103 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings, and in Rise of the Tomb Raider, this graphics card managed to receive 139 frames per second at 1080p Ultra Settings. So, for my recommendation for the high-end video cards, I'm going to have to go with either the GTX 1070 or 1080. In my opinion, with the high power draw from the RX Vega series and the fact that they're more expensive and typically perform worse than competition from NVIDIA, the RX Vega series was kind of a flop and I really wouldn't recommend either card in this state. So as I've stated before, I do a recommendation for the all-around best gaming card and for me that's going to have to be the RX 570. It's such a great price to performance card and if you get it, you're going to be able to play all of your games in high settings at 1080p with 60 frames per second. You really can do no wrong with this card. But that's about it for today's video. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like and consider supporting me on Patreon. If you didn't, go ahead and leave a dislike. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, then subscribe and turn on post notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Spotify, and please leave a comment down below telling me what I should make a video on next. And that's all for me, but like always, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye guys!